So you're trying to figure out what type of entrance to install in your high tunnel or hoop house. Person doors might be a bit too small for you, double sliding doors seem to be out of your price range, and steel roll up doors are taking up a lot of headroom in your structure. For those of us wanting to install an entrance between 8 foot and 22 foot wide, but needing to do so on a budget, we have to get creative. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a manually operated economy roll up door. These doors can be made wide enough to get machinery into, are relatively inexpensive, and are simple to install. Now before we start the installation of the door, we have to take note of our roll-up side operators. And depending on your particular setup, it may be easiest to put your roll-up side operators on the other end of the structure. For us, we were able to install our roll-up operator on the same end that our door will operate on. For us, the height of our roll-up door in relation to the height of our sidewall allowed us to leave the operator for the roll-up side on this end of the structure. Now let's take a look at all of the materials we need for this installation. I'll have links in the description to where you can find them. You'll need one gearbox. This one here is a left output, even though it's on the right. You'll need a guide pipe or a guide post for the gearbox to go up and down on. You'll need a large roll bar. It could be one piece or two pieces, depending on how wide your opening is. You'll need a small roll bar, which goes underneath it. You'll need a piece of plastic that will cover the opening you've made. You'll need anti-billow tubing to hold the roll bars in place in windstorms. And you'll need threaded rod that can attach the anti-billow tubing to your structure. Snap clamps and single channel will be used to hold the plastic against the roll bars. Now. Let's get going and begin to walk through some of the installation process. The first component we're going to focus on assembling is our large roll bar. Now these must extend 8 to 12 inches past your door rough opening, which is on the left of this picture, and 12 to 15 inches past your structure side. Now this is on the right side. Large roll bars can be two pieces or one piece. In this scenario we were able to use one piece of tubing to make up our large roll bar and we're going to focus on putting on the gearbox for the roll bar first. Now if you look at the gearbox, it has a square hole right there on the outside of the gearbox and we're going to put it uh, right into the round hole. So what do you got to do? You have to have an adapter. So the gearboxes all come with adapters and basically one end has a square uh, insert and the other end has a round insert and there's a hole in the adapter that will line up with the hole on your large roll bar. Now if you buy a DIY kit from us and you order one of these doors, it comes with the hole pre-drilled. But if you need to pre-drill a hole, it does tell you in the instructions of the gearbox how far in you need to drill that hole. So what we're doing is we're lining up the adapter, we're putting on the bolt with a, a lock nut, and for this particular one that I'm putting on, it's a 7 16 inch uh, drive. So, you know, I'm getting um, an impact driver with a 7 16 inch socket, and I'm using a wrench, and I'm tightening it down in place. And now what we've done is we've created the ability to connect a square hole to a round tube. Now I'm going to more firmly connect the gearbox to the adapter that's in the tube. So we have a bolt and a washer, and if you take a little, you know, closer look here, I'm going to thread that on, get it in place, and pin it in with a 7 16 drive socket and uh, impact driver. Now we've uh, assembled the large roll bar, the gearbox is in place, and as you can see this is where the gearbox and large roll bar will be located in the future. So this gearbox and roll bar are done, um, and we're ready to move on to the smaller roll bar, which you can see here. And our small roll bar is just one piece, so the very first thing we're going to do is attach spring wire channel to it. Now there are some pieces of tube that come with depressions in them that double as the spring wire channel, but for this particular job those weren't available. So for us we're just using a simple piece of spring wire channel and attaching it directly to a 1 and 3 8 inch tube. And so you can see here uh, 1 inch in and then every 12 inches through the full length, and I'm trying to keep that channel in a straight line on the top of that roll bar. I lined it up even with the end and I'm going down to try and keep it uh, on a straight line. You know, it will want to twist on you a little bit, but just do your best to kind of hold it in place. As we put in the last screws here, take note of the end of the channel. And remember that we're going to be putting greenhouse plastic on this. So, so the ends of the channel here are looking a bit sharp. 
So what we're going to do is, you know, the, the poor man's hammer here. I'm using a set of pliers. It's easier with hammer, obviously, but I didn't have a hammer on me. So we're just depressing these a little bit so they're not as sharp. And as you can see here, this is eventually what the small roll bar will have done to it. You know, wire will be put into the plastic over top of it, uh, right into the small roll bar. Now that we've assembled both of the roll bars and they're awaiting installation, we can install the greenhouse plastic panel, which will be used for your door. But before we do this, we need to make sure we have holes drilled through the header of your door so that the threaded rod can be installed at a later step. Now you can see here I've already drilled a hole, and I'm three inches in from the stud that is holding the door framing in place. These holes will be used to hold threaded rod in place for your anti-billow tubing. Now, so the three inches here allows a little bit of an offset from your spring wire channel on the right, which is denoted by this red line. You're going to leave this uh, red line open so you can secure your door with wire when winds are coming. Now that we've covered that, let's install your greenhouse plastic, which will be your future economy roll-up door. So here I am, I'm trying to find a corner to start on. and. The piece of plastic is about a foot to a foot and a half wider left and right, and it's approximately three or four feet uh, taller than we need. You're gonna want excess, you can always trim it off. So I'm just getting a starting spot here. Starting on one side at the top, we're going to secure just a, a couple inches of spring wire, and we just wanna make sure we have about four inches of excess plastic uh, above the door header, and about a foot to a foot and a half to the left here. Um, and then we're going to kind of make sure we're squared up. You see I'm wiring that in there. Uh, we're going to go to the other side. Uh, so now I'm going to lift this up, make sure that everything is looking square. You can see I have lines uh, for folds around the plastic here. So I can use those to make sure I'm, I'm running my plastic square. And then I'm going to uh, wire in about four to seven inches of spring wire. And you can see I have, once again, one to one and a half feet of excess plastic on the right side of the door stud and leave between four and six inches of plastic above the door header. Even though the door is resting relatively square, I wanna make sure it's a little tighter for the next steps that we're going to do. So I want to just go ahead and I'm gonna secure a little spring wire at the bottom left and the bottom right as well. You can see I'm just putting in about four to eight inches of Spring wire going to the opposite side and putting in another four to eight inches of spring wire. This will hold the entire thing square and taut while we move on to the next step. For the next step, we're gonna secure the entire top of this plastic panel with spring wire. But if you remember previous steps, when we drilled a hole through your header, we wanna make sure that the wire does not obstruct the holes that we drilled. So let's take a look here. You can see a little bit of the hole, but I'm gonna just pull down this plastic um, to, to show you that you know I, I will be able to access that hole at later steps. Using pieces of spring wire I already had temporarily secured, I'm gonna move from the stud towards the middle on each side of the top plastic panel here. And you can see, you know, I sped this up, but uh, you can see I'm just kind of holding the excess plastic at the top and running the spring wire until they meet each other in the middle. And then once I get to the middle, you're all secured at the top. Next step is to mark your plastic panel. And what I like to do is measure and mark the plastic at a number of points. And I'm making my marks at the halfway point through the rough opening height. So you can see here I'm making a mark, I'm making another mark, and essentially that's gonna give us a straight line. And these lines will be used as a guide for uh, the next step, which will be making additional marks. And you can see here, this is just a close-up of what my marks look like. And you can see I made two marks on this one, but don't worry, I know the right one. Now we're gonna head to the outside of the tunnel, and we had put spring wire in the channel at the bottom to hold it all in place while we were measuring, but let's take those out so we can lift the bar up. And now this is most easily done with two people. As you can see, I have a person on the inside of the tunnel, and we're lifting up this larger roll bar, and we're gonna just kind of get it roughly in line with the marks I've made. As you can see, we were able to set our long roll bar on top of our actual roll-up side. Now, you may not be able to do this, and if you don't have yours set up just like this, don't worry. A third person can do the same thing that, that our roll-up sidebar is doing, which is holding it in place, um, or you could also set up some sawhorses to hold it in place. Now we're just gonna adjust the long roll bar 
so that the gearbox is in the right position. So you can see I'm pushing it out so it extends past the structure about 12 to 15 inches. And that's where we want it um, for when we install the guidepost for it later. Now I'm measuring down from the marks I made already on my greenhouse plastic and I'm measuring four inches down and I'm making another set of marks. We want the ultimate resting location for the long roll bar to be in the middle of our opening, which is why we made the first marks. However, plastic is sucked up into the roll bar as it turns, so we need to make the second group of markings a little bit lower than our first. In our case, four inches lower. You can see here I have two sets of lines. We're going to use this bottom line for securing the snap clamp. So here I am, I'm just holding the, the bar against the, the framing, putting the snap clamp on. You can see the top of that snap clamp is lined up with the mark I made. I'm putting another one in the middle here. Again, I'm using the bottom set of marks that I made. And then I'm running to the far side here. And I'm putting another snap clamp on. Now these are just to hold them in place. I do realize that there's only three snap clamps on at this point. And if we let it rest with no pressure, the person on the inside has now let go of the long roll bar. And you can see that it's resting pretty evenly. So we like the way it looks. We're gonna grab some snap clamps and get ready to put some more on. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the spaces and I'm gonna put on a number of snap clamps more. I'm just filling in the spaces uh, to provide more support for the roll bar. Now, I'm not being conservative with the number of snap clamps I use. I want it to be held firmly, and I'm making sure that I have one snap clamp on the outside of your studs on each side of the, the plastic panel door. And you can see here, I'm actually, I removed one of the snap clamps and I'm redoing it because I didn't like the way it, it uh, the plastic fell in between the snap clamps. They're really quite easy to take off and put on if you need to, but here we go. This is what it looks like uh, once all the snap clamps are on. Now that we're at this point, you can see I just roll it once or twice, and that will take me up to the top marks that I made. And um, you can see I have tons of excess at the bottom, which I can use for the bottom roll bar. But now that we're in a decent spot, I'm going to put the guide pipe through the gearbox, rotate it around, and I'm going to use this as a guide for pounding the guide post into place. Now this part's a little tricky. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our guide bar is parallel, the guide post is parallel to the side of our hoops. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take a tape measure. Um, first I want to make sure that I'm you know, in line and it's, it's in line with the side of the front face of the structure. So I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to measure the distance between the hoop and the, the guide post and I'm going to do the same at another point on the guide post and just kind of double check it. And I'll be able to move it a little bit after I start if I want to, but at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to climb the ladder and I'm going to hammer this large tube into the ground. It's a little awkward at first, but um, as you'll see, it you know it's definitely doable. Just be careful here. Provide you know yourself a bit of caution. Maybe have another person to hold the ladder. Um, if you can get a little higher up, it's easier, obviously, if you're not hammering above your head here. But I was in a little bit of a hurry, racing a thunderstorm, racing the dark. Um, so I sped this up a bit, but you can see I'm just pounding this into the ground. What you want to do is make sure that the top of that guide post is roughly even to the top of your, your door header. Um, maybe a couple inches higher than the door header if you were to draw, draw a straight line across. Once your guide post has been pounded all the way in, this is what it will look like. Your guide post is in. Remember you rotated that long roll bar a couple couple turns there so you can't see the snap clamps right now but when you look across here the roll bars are attached to the greenhouse plastic and you got some excess here for the bottom here it's time to trim it off a little now if you haven't already trimmed at the bottom you only need a couple feet so here you can see I have about five feet of excess plastic I'm just gonna cut this down because it's going to be a handful if you don't do that once you've trimmed that down to size, you're ready to put the small roll bar right up against the bottom framing of your rough opening. And you can see here, the main goal is to make sure you have seven inches to a foot on the left side uh, past the stud and seven inches to a foot on the right side past the stud. This will uh, allow your bottom roll bar to go up and down, but still be framed in by the structure itself. So let's continue on with the, the small roll bar here. Starting in the middle of the small roll bar, we're going to push over top of the plastic with spring wire 
into the small roll bar itself. So we're gonna start with some spring wire in the middle and we're gonna work our way to the left and out to the right to secure the plastic to the small roll bar. If you get to the end of your small roll bar and you're out of wire, it's okay to cut a small piece and work back from the end of your small roll bar in towards where you ended the first piece of spring wire you worked with. So you can see here I'm just eyeballing a piece of spring wire, making the cut with some pliers, and I'm gonna put it in right here, starting with the end of that roll bar and working in towards where I, I stopped the last spring wire. You can see here I overlap as well, so I don't I don't cut it again. I, I'm overlapping the wire. I can definitely hold that amount of wire, um, so you're good to go if you want to do that. Now that your bottom bar is secure, it's time to do a test roll. And with the test roll, we're just going to roll it up, see if it rolls up even. If we like it, we can move on to the next part of the installation. If we need to adjust anything, this is where we do the adjustments. So let's give it a go. And I'll do this in real time here. I won't speed it up. That way you can kind of see exactly what it will look like on this test roll. So as you can see, the middle bar rotates and it's just pulling up the bottom bar. The bottom bar never rotates. When we're doing this, we're simply looking for things that may not seem even that can be adjusted. And we're also looking to see what parts of the greenhouse plastic panel could be trimmed. When any part of the roll bars touch the top header, as is on the left side here, that's when we stop our test. And there are a few very notable things here that I'm seeing. So one, our long roll bar looks like it's sagging a little bit on the right and it's not as even as I'd like it to be. Um, and then also of course the plastic that's hanging off of the bottom roll bar, we can trim that off so it can really open up the entrance. So let's address the issue of the long roll bar sagging. And the reason this is sagging, in my opinion, is there's a lot of roll bar not being supported by the door. So the plastic doesn't extend really close to the guide post. And because of that, without more plastic, all of the weight from that remaining roll bar is transferred to the gearbox. To fix this, we need to take some of the pressure off of that roll bar closer to the gearbox. And so we're gonna do that now with a small strip of plastic that I've cut. You can see here, I just found a little excess plastic uh, from the bottom. And my goal is to simply secure this strip so that it helps hold some of the weight of that gearbox so that the roll bar can roll up more evenly. Now, not all large roll up doors like we're installing now will need a small piece of plastic put on like I'm doing in this step. Uh, this is a, a result of a a lot of distance between the edge of the the stud to the the right side gearbox there there's just a lot of weight on it so anyways as you can see here I used spring wire to hold the small strip of plastic in place at the top and here's a close-up you can see the wire still hanging off on the right of that strip and then I'm gonna go right down and I'm gonna put a snap clamp right on the large roll bar uh, as you can see on the right side there and um, once I get that one in place and the, the large roll bar seems to be even from left to right, I'm going to go ahead and put on a second snap clamp just to hold it in place even more firm than previously. And we'll actually permanently secure these snap clamps and the rest of them um, in, in a step here coming up. So now that we've taken the pressure off that roll bar closer to the gearbox, let's go ahead and do a second test here. And I'm just rolling it up. And you can see it is rolling a lot more even. And uh, you can tell by looking at the horizontal members on the end wall framing and the distance from those horizontal members to that long roll bar. So I'm liking this a lot more now that we're getting close to the, uh, the header here. And as we get to the top, I like the way it looks. So we're going to move on to the trimming portion. So let's go ahead and take some scissors and we're just gonna trim the top so that we only have a couple inches above the header. And we're going to move, you know, I start in the middle and I usually move just to the left and the right until it's all trimmed up on the, on the header portion. Now let's do something about this excess plastic hanging at the bottom here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add snap clamps to the bottom of this small roll bar just to keep some of this plastic from hanging in the way. Now remember, we already secured this plastic with spring wire. So this is literally just to keep the plastic from, from hanging down. To make it look nice and neat, I tend to use about, you know, a snap clamp every 15 inches or so through the full length of that small roll bar. And once I get to the, the end and I've put all the snap clamps on, it's time to cut. 
So with our final cut here, I'm going to within about an inch of the roll bar. And now our bottom roll bar is done. We have snap clamps on the large roll bar and we're gonna put screws in those. So I unroll a little bit just so I can see the snap clamps and then driving a single pan head tack screw through the snap clamp and into the large roll bar will keep these firm in place. Now I'm gonna speed this up, uh, but I do this on every single one of the snap clamps through the full length of the large roll bar. And as you can see here, you know, I've already covered this, but they're about 15 inches apart. And as I make my way through the full length of this roll bar, I'm also going to secure the small strip of plastic that has snap clamps on it. I'm gonna secure it in the same manner. Also, if you wanna trim a little bit more of this, go ahead. Now that the roll bars are secured, it's time for the final steps. We're gonna be putting on our anti-billow tubing, which require threaded rod and also, of course, the anti-billow tubes. The first thing we're gonna do is line these up approximately where they need to go, and you can see the top is a bit high. That's gonna get pounded into the ground. Let's take a closer look at the top of this anti-billow tube. You can see there's a, a hole drilled here that will fit our threaded rod, and this hole is approximately three inches from the top of our anti-billow tube. Now we're gonna make a mark for where we want to drive our tube into the ground. You can see here I've pushed the anti-billow tube approximately where I want it, which measurement-wise is approximately three inches from the inside edge of the stud to the center of where you want to drive your post and the measurement from the outside of the threshold of your door framing to where you want to drive your tube is two and a half inches. So now that we know where we're gonna pound this anti-billow tube in, let's go ahead and get it set up. The whole end of the tube, the, you know, the, the end with the hole in it is at the top and it's gonna be oriented so if we wanted to look through the hole that's in the end of that, we'd be able to look right through the hole into the tunnel. So I'm gonna just start pounding this down and as I'm going down, I'm trying to make sure that the tube is plumb. And I'm checking the hole here because I want to stop pounding it in when the hole in the anti-billow tube lines up with the hole that we pre-drilled in the header. So I'm getting close to this now, and it looks like I've, I've made it to where I need to be. Things move some when you're pounding them in, so I'm measuring exactly where I put that anti-billow tube into the ground. And I'm going to replicate the exact location on the right side as the left. That way we have perfect symmetry and that way we're going to line up with the hole in the uh, the header that we've installed as well. So here I am pounding the anti-billow tube in, checking that hole that's drilled through the anti-billow tube to make sure it lines up with the hole in the header. Everything looks to line up so let's thread them in. I like to push the threaded rod through the holes from the inside of the tunnel. So here I am, I have a 3 8 inch diameter one foot long threaded rod and I'm going to push it through the hole in our header. So we're just going to wiggle it in through the hole in the inside and the outside and I've already put a washer and a nut on the end of it in order to keep the threaded rod from being pulled through the front of the structure. Going to the other side we're repeating the same process. We have a washer and a nut already on it and we're going to push a little out through to the front. Here we are at the front, and before we push the anti-billow tube's hole onto the threaded rod, we want to make sure we have enough threaded rod exposed. Um, we want to put one washer on the threaded rod, then two nuts, and then another washer. The washers and nuts will help keep the anti-billow tube the right distance from your roll-up door during its operation. And here's a close-up of what this looks like. So you can see where we have the washers and the nuts as spacers. After the anti-billow tube's pushed on, we'll end with a washer and two nuts. If you don't have two nuts to end, one is fine too. I just like to use two because I feel like it's a little bit more secure. Now that you see how they all go on, here I am in real time pushing the anti-billow tube's hole onto the threaded rod and then throwing on some washers and nuts, getting it appropriately spaced. You can see I'm just kind of you know, rotating them around here until I like what I see. And I got one nut on the outside for now. I'll have to come back and throw another one on there if I want later. So that's the process for putting on your anti-billow tube. And you'll repeat that process on the opposite side um, of your structure so that both are completed. When both anti-billow tubes are in, you'll see you'll have each one secured in the ground with each of their tops connected with threaded rod and the appropriate nuts and washers. Now, if your economy roll-up door is much wider than this one, let's say between 14 and 22 feet wide, you may want more anti-billow tubes and additional support studs somewhere within the width of your door. 
But that being said, all of these installation steps provided in this video would still apply. So if you're looking to install a larger opening on your end wall, and you want the entrance to be wider than most available doors on the market, and you want to do it relatively low cost, the economy roll-up door might be an option to consider. And while we do offer these large doors as packages along with our DIY structure kits, I've also included links to all of the materials used in this video if you were going to try and set one of these openings up on your existing structure. If you have any questions about the process as outlined in this video, please leave a comment. And if you're interested in watching additional videos like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.